If you've got or been recently given your first guitar, well, first of all, congratulations! Woo! No doubt it's been a very exciting time and one that you'll remember 20 years from now when you're still playing guitar and enjoying yourself. But now that you've got the guitar, what do you do now? That's what I'm here to explain to you today. Now, this isn't a video to explain explain what guitar you should choose. We've actually recently just done one of those where we've done a guide to kind of getting your first guitar. You can click either link above my head or in the description to take you to that. What I'll be doing is covering some of the essential things you can do now that you have the guitar, how to use all the equipment in your starter pack, and just a few things to kickstart your journey. So obviously the most important thing is going to be the guitar. You know, you don't necessarily need any of these additional parts that I'm going to list off just in a second. Second, but certainly if you've got yourself a starter pack or you've you know asked the person in the shop certainly in guitar guitar we're going to recommend a bit of a list of things just to kind of help you you know kick start the journey i'll list those off right now what you're going to need is a tuner an amp a cable a selection of plectrums a guitar stand a bag and a guitar strap so once you've unboxed your brand new guitar and of course posed in the mirror a little bit with it, one of the first things that's going to be really important is getting your guitar in tune. Now whether you use a clip-on tuner that comes with our starter packs, you use a plug-in tuner or even a phone app, having a dedicated tuner or at least you know something that you can properly check the tuning of your guitar is such an important habit to get into while you're playing because it'll obviously keep your guitar sounding really good and sort of you know help you get a bit of relative pitch so that you know what the guitar should sound like when it's fully in tune. So for example, if you have got one of the starter packs, you'll have this kind of tuner in it, which is a clip-on. Now, all you have to do with this is clip it to the headstock of your guitar. I'll kind of, I'll do it the other way around. You can kind of have this either sticking on the front or the back. It really doesn't matter just as long as you can see it. And once it's turned on, green's on there. You'll have a few different options to select with these tuners as well. Usually I'll use the chromatic option and you can cycle through them by pressing the power button just once and you'll see the option change at the bottom of the tuner. Either use chromatic or guitar or if you have a bass, use it for that. All you need to do is just play the string, the note will come up there and if it's sitting on the left hand side, you basically need to turn it counterclockwise just to tighten the string and then it's on the right hand side of the tuner, you just need to loosen the string where you turn it clockwise like that and once it's hit the middle and it's in tune the screen will turn green and that's you in tune and of course just repeat that over all six strings for anybody who's going through any sort of lessons or using any teaching learning the names of the open strings will be taught to you just to go over them very quickly for anyone who wants to know as well starting with your thickest you have e a d g b and another high e there. Go back in the video, make a note of that if you want to. Again, just always use your tuner. It's really, really helpful. So of course, now that we are all in tune, this being an electric guitar, you probably want to get some noise out of this and plug it into an amp. As I mentioned, this amp here by East Coast, this actually comes with our starter pack. It's got quite a few features on it that'll you know really inspire you and actually it sounds really, really good as well. You may be wondering how to actually connect this up. So let's take you through a step-by-step -step process on just how to get some sounds out of this. So once your amp is all connected up to the power, a little tip I would say is keep it off until you actually connect any cables to it. It just, that should be one of the last few things you do with it. So what you'll do is you'll take your guitar cable and you'll just plug it into the input on the front of the amplifier until you hear it click in and it doesn't move anymore. Then again, before you actually turn the amp on, I would recommend you actually plugging it into the guitar as well. There's some kind of unwanted noises that you'll probably experience if you've taken a guitar cable out and no doubt you'll hear them throughout your journey. If you get into a habit of doing this, you'll just get some kind of, you know, you'll avoid all those unwanted noises from the amplifier. So now that it's turned on, make sure your volume is either down or up on your guitar. Again, just, you know, if you want to avoid that sort of sudden shot of volume, you can keep the volume on your guitar turned down, which is just the first knob on a guitar like this, but every other guitar should have one too. Then what we do, just go over, hit the power button, and that's us on. So now that we're all powered on and we're hooked up to the guitar here, I'm just gonna take you through a very quick explanation of the controls on an amp like this. Now, yours may vary, you might have a slightly different amp. Most of them kind of share these similar conventions and will have maybe some effects 
They'll usually have a clean and a distortion channel and I'll explain what they are when we get to them. Starting with the input of the amplifier, we've already covered that. That's where the cable goes in and connects to your guitar. We're going to actually start with this knob here, which is our clean channel. Now this amplifier has just got a dedicated volume for the clean there. And of course, that's just going to determine how much volume is coming out of that channel. And to give you a brief kind of, you know, sound for what a clean channel actually is, if you're not too sure what that is, here's what it sounds like. That's what would be described traditionally as like a clean sound from a guitar. You'll hear kind of varying different sort of tones and you can shape it to how you want, but that's going to be kind of 99% what you'll get from an amplifier. Moving over to these other knobs here, this is the equalization or EQ. You'll kind of hear either or there. You'll notice that there are three knobs for that there. You have treble, mid, and bass. Basically, in a nutshell, you know, as you kind of go through your guitar journey, you'll you'll come to realize exactly what these are doing. But for the moment, you really just need to focus on several things. Basically, treble is going to make things a lot brighter, a lot kind of, you know, almost like kind of harsher sounding with these single coils, which I'll like let you hear in a second. The bass is what's going to give you that kind of low sort of rumble to your tone. It's going to make things warmer and, you know, it'll just kind of make it less thin sounding basically. Then your mids, that's basically just all the frequencies in between as well. Just again, mess with these, see what it does for your tone. There's no real right or wrong answer with these. But what I'll do is I'll briefly go through just what the extremes of them are and you'll be able to hear for yourself. Depending on the kind of guitar you've got, there is going to be quite sort of varying sounds that come through from that. Those sort of like thinner, funkier sounds that I was getting may sound completely different on your guitar. But as I said, there's no right or wrong answers with those. Experiment and see what sounds good to you. The knob on the very right here as well, this is a, an actual effect for the amplifier as well called reverb. Now what essentially this does is just gives your sound a little bit more space, it's a little less direct. The best way that I describe it to a lot of newcomers is if you imagine you're in, you know, a big hall or a big like, you know, a church or something like that and you can hear like your voice reflecting sometimes or it just sounds massive, that's what that's going to do. Again, just a little bit of sort of effect. It's not necessary. You might not even like it, but it's there if you want to use it. And I'll let you hear it just now.
One of the last sections we'll touch on as well is the overdrive channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with just this little button here and you'll notice that it's not lit up at the moment on the little LED here. People can call overdrive certain different things. It's either overdrive, it's distortion, dirt, anything of those sort of you know descriptions that you'll have no doubt heard before you even started your guitar journey here. But what this essentially is, is you've got your clean channel and your distortion channel. If you're into rock or anything like that, you'll no doubt heard it now. This has got two options on it. One being volume, which is exactly the same as the clean channel. That's gonna control your overall output and how loud the amplifier is gonna be. But this other knob here, gain, this is quite important as well when it comes to an overdrive channel. Basically, the lower that you've got it turned, the less distortion or overdrive you're gonna experience. The higher up you turn that as well, the kind of more powerful, the more obviously overdriven and distorted it's going to be. Now that's not related to volume as well because you can actually, you can combat that. You turn up the gain, you lower the volume a bit. It's not actually any audibly louder, but the sound is broken up and it's obviously dirty and distorted. But let's hear some sounds from that just now too. <laughs> Another very important point, obviously, with the amp is the fact that you can plug headphones into this. Now, this input just on the right-hand side of this one here, that's where you're going to be plugging your headphones into. You'll notice it is a slightly larger jack than maybe anything you've experienced before, but there are little adapters you can get that will actually change your normal everyday headphones, if you've got wired ones, to be able to plug it into an amp like this, which just means that you can, you know, you can play this late on at night, you can play it when people are in the house, if you just need a little bit of privacy as well. It's a really good feature that you should definitely invest in. So of course, now that you know how to connect your amp, how to connect your guitar, what all the features do on it as well, you'll no doubt be playing for hours and hours on end. One little thing that I would mention as well, and this is just from experience from certainly in a guitar shop and just playing guitar for a while myself. If you're gonna be playing your guitar quite a lot, it is a good idea to invest either in just a dedicated cloth for you your guitar, just any sort of microfiber will work totally fine. And you can also get yourself some guitar cleaner if you want, but don't use any sort of wood or furniture polish or anything like that on your guitar. It'll just kind of smudge it and it just won't feel particularly nice. So after you've played it for a little while, it's kind of a bit gross to think, but just think of all the sweat and the skin and all the horrible stuff that's going to be on your guitar. You're going to want to keep it in great condition, so give it a little clean after you've used it every time and it'll last for twice as long. And on that note of playing it for a lot, long while and, you know, it getting a bit gross, you'll probably notice that your strings after a little bit of time will maybe not feel as good, not sound as good. If your strings do look like they have dirt or grime or just look like they're a bit more worn, probably time for a restring. If you do want to tackle this yourself, it is a skill that is really, really good to have as a guitarist, especially as you're again, going through and learning and on your own journey. If you want to see, we actually did a restring video on how to do an electric guitar and a bass and an acoustic actually as well. If you click the link above our heads or down in the description there, you'll be able to watch that. I'm sure if you have a guitar store near you or you have a guitar guitar near you, we certainly provide a restring option with our techs. You can bring it in, we'll give it a clean, we'll make sure it's all restrung and it's 
playing just as good as new. So now that you know the basics and you're well and truly on your guitar adventure, the only thing that's left up to you is to learn how to play the thing. Obviously there's multiple things out there to help you learn how to play the guitar and even just the ability to learn by yourself or be self-taught is something that a lot of players have actually done. From my experience and certainly from a lot of guitarists who've been playing for a while experience, there's nothing quite like having one-to-one -one lessons with an experienced guitar teacher. It's going to be the quickest, the easiest, and you get instant sort of feedback as well what you need to work on with your playing. If that's not your vibe and you maybe just want to learn by yourself and you don't want a teacher or even if it's not possible where you live or anything, there's a multitude of other things that can certainly get you on the way. Online teaching platforms such as Fender and Gibson's own apps, they are absolutely fantastic to get you kind of playing songs, which is one of the most helpful things I would say when you start kind of getting playing. Certainly if you can play a song that you recognize or some other people recognize, it gives you that sort of instant gratification and it feels really good. And of course, YouTube has got thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of free tutorials and great teachers on there as well that can get you kind of going on a similar pace. Certainly go with just whichever one suits you as a player and a person. There's so many opportunities to learn, you know, from various different avenues. So even if you do multiples where you, you know, do a bit of online tutorial, you get yourself a teacher in real life, it can only benefit your actual, you know, your adventure and your journey just by getting as much guitar as you can under your belt. It's important to say that obviously we've all been in the position you're in where, you know, you're looking up this sort of foreign new world to you with guitar. It can be quite a, quite a daunting experience and quite a difficult one to get started on, but trust me, and certainly trust everybody in Guitar Guitar as well, we were all there before and we've kept up our love of guitar. We've, and whether that be to obtain our own goals in our head, to play some songs we've never wanted to play, to expand our music theory, which even just to play in a band or you know jam with your friends and stuff, there's no right or wrong answer with guitar. So if you're still enjoying it, and you continue to enjoy it, then just keep it up. Just keep going at it every single day. Good bit of advice that I got certainly when I was learning was if you play your guitar five minutes every single day instead of say four hours at the weekend or something, then you'll progress really, really far and you'll just, you know, you'll continue to enjoy it and just keep going down that path. Before you know it, you'll be shredding all your favorite songs. But hopefully that cleared things up for you after you've gotten your first guitar starter pack. And again, the rest is up to you to actually learn how to play it. But if you do have any questions, we have a myriad of social media links that we've got down below. You can give us a question down there. Even throw us one in the comments in this video and give us a like and subscribe while you're down there. And we'll work on some beginner stuff together. But until next time, I've been Kieran and it's up to you now to go practice your guitar. Have a great day.